Um, oh, I feel like I've got to read my eulogy after watching that without music, but um, <laughs> thanks to everyone for coming out today. Um, I spoke to the boys downstairs and uh, retirement's always a tough one and um, it was good to get all their attention for uh, that 10, 15, 20 minutes. Um, and I guess I said to the boys, as sad as it is, I'm content with what I've achieved over my career. Um, I guess, you know, that fairy tale finish, you, you dream of a send-off game. You think of JK last year with a big mural out here, kicking those bag of goals at the end. Uh, you think of Lekka kicking um, or winning the, the premiership in his final game. And sometimes it just doesn't end up like that. But like I said, I'm content with what I've had. I've had a lot of fulfilment, a lot of enjoyment at this footy club, and they provided a lot for me. Growing up, uh, I said to the guys, um, you know, my dream growing up was to play football, but to provide for my family. And the clubs allowed me the opportunity to do that. And I thank Niz and Anna and the crew earlier for, you know, putting me in the right space and the right places to be able to achieve that. And I guess if people ask me if I have any regrets not playing on next year or not winning a premiership, I've got a steady roof over my head and that's all I could ever ask for. So I'm so grateful and indebted to the footy club for, for everything they've done. Um, you know, my mum was a new migrant to this to this country and to try and find our way in Aussie society was always a big um, challenge for us. And that's probably why I moved to doing the multicultural roles with the AFL and trying to give back to the community because for me, that meant more to me as a youngster than anything growing up. And I hope as much as I got to put some bums on seats, people to come watch me play footy, I also got to inspire some people off the field as well with whatever hardships they were enduring or things they were going through. And um, yeah. I guess, you know, I started on Bushby Street. Everyone probably knows that story, kicking the footy in between the rubbish bins with some of the, you know, great Indigenous players that we've seen come across the footy field in, in Michael Walters and Chris Yaron. And, you know, being able to then later on down the track run out in front of 50,000 people was a boyhood dream come true. So, like I said, I'm thankful for the, to the footy club, to Niz and the crew for, for bringing me in here. Um, and to Simo as well. I, I thank Simo for teaching me um, how to lead in my own way, in my own right. Um, you know, we've had a, some great leaders before us and uh, he taught me to, to lead in my own way to, I guess, inspire guys and challenge guys the way I do it, not like how anyone else has done it. And I thank him for that. And I also thanked him alongside some of my rut coaches. I've learned a lot from, from my rut coaches over the years in Coxie and Dean Irving and Big Emu at the back. Um, but Simo actually helped me reinvent some of my rucking styles to prolong my career um, when I couldn't jump as much after I did a couple of my knees. So, um, yeah, thank you again, Simo, for, for doing that. Um, to people that's helped me along the way, Midvale Junior Footy Club, Swan Districts, Governor Sterling, guys like the Marachi family, the Cavicios, um, you know, Andrew Davini, Ralph Cipro, the, the Gartrell family, Kevin Gartrell um, and Mike Wilkie out at Slater Gartrell Sports. For anyone that doesn't know, that's a, a little footy factory of producing footballers coming out of there. Um, just teaching us discipline and what it's like to rock up uh, to a job on time, teaching what punctuality is all about and what it means and, and putting us in good stead for when we got to an AFL footy club. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, to my agent, Melissa, there's not too many times that people thank their managers, um, but Mel's been part of my family and someone that's helped me out a fair bit. And you know, I'm so thankful for everything she's done for myself and my family off field. And um, probably the community department of this footy club, I thanked a, a few of them earlier, but to Kim Hanna, Clock, I think he's actually, I don't know if he's in the room, but they're running the Nat Nui Academy outside at the moment. Um, they couldn't make it up here, but to him and Chris Summers and those guys that taught us what community means to, to football in WA, what this club means to the broader community as well. I think the greatest joys I got out of football that wasn't involving playing on the field was going to some of those oncology wards at Princess Margaret Hospital um, and the power that we had. I spoke to the boys about uh, a little kid wanting to eat his veggies because a player told him to do it rather than the nurse or, the, or his parents doing it, you know, holds so much weight and so much value. Uh, it was only a couple of weeks ago we had a Make-A-Wish um, guy come over and he'd been given six months and his dying wish was to, to meet um, some West Coast Eagles footballers. He came and met Luke and, and I before a game and, um, man, that's super humbling, like, to think that someone on their deathbed, um, you know, wants to ride in a limousine, wants to fly on a plane, but wants to meet two guys that kick a, a footy around for a living. Um, that's something that will live with me for so long and something I'm so proud to call myself a role model or an idol to some people and something I'll never take for granted. Um, and that probably comes with the back of my mum. Mum's um, no longer with us, but the things she taught me while she was here um, have stuck me for a long time. And she, she used to um, pray for me every week. Um, she used to actually drive, um, drag our old chaplain, Paul Morrison, along to the ICU units and, and pray for, for kids in there, people in car crashes, and then come and relay some of those stories and, 
and you know just teach us about perspective and gratitude for where we're at and what we do and I'm so thankful for that um, you know my twin brother he um, he's another one he doesn't care if I'm a footballer or not um, he actually hates it he um, he gets up at 4 a.m. and if I'm whinging about taking a photo with someone, he's talking about having to clean someone's shit out of their toilet. So, <laughs> I um, I'm thank you for his humility and his grounding and, and giving me perspective in my everyday life. And to my family back home in the village in Fiji and Suvavo, uh, vanaka vaka level to you all. Thank you for all that you've done. Um, you know, I've got one of my family members here, Harry. When, when Mum passed away in 2015, um, I had no family here. My brother had moved to Melbourne, so I was one out. And it's tough, sort of navigating your, your road through. Um, the WA media, as you know, it has its ups and downs. When you're doing well, when you're, when you're not doing well, or when you're doing well, they're completely different. And if you ride that roller coaster, sometimes mentally it can be challenging for you. So um, I thank the club and the HR department and everyone involved to help get my sister and, um, and, and Big Harry here in the camera over. Um, he's always smiling. I said to the guys, if you ever need some perspective on you know, what a footy club's all about, have a look at this guy because uh, he smiles. You know, we had a massive derby loss on the weekend, but... He's still happy that he's wearing his West Coast kit. He wears it to the shops. Uh, I saw him. I actually, I remember the first week Harry came across. Sorry to put you on the spot, Harry. He um, took a selfie on Facebook and my family was showing me he's got this new Canon 374800 camera that he loved that he got to use and he was showing it off. And it was like Harry Potter showing off one of his Nimbus 3000 things. So I, um, I'm i forever thankful for my family for, for humbling me. Um, yeah, and, and to my family for doing that. Like, um, yeah, a story that I, I probably haven't told much is my uncle actually was semi-famous, there's my little child crying along, but my uncle was semi-famous growing up and he picked me up from school um, when I was in pre-primary and I thought that was the big, biggest thing ever. I gained about 500 new friends. Um, for the oldies in the room, he was a, a gladiator, and gladiator, his name was Vulcan, um, probably where I decided to get the dreadlocks from. So when he picked me up from school, I thought that was the most inspiring thing and the happiest thing in my life. And um, you know, fast forward 15, 20 years later, I'm picking up my little nieces and nephews from school and asking them to hold my hand across the road and they don't want to. And I think I had to check my ego because I asked them, do you know how many of your little mates would kill to hold this hand? And um, I thank them for that because at times as footballers you get put up on this pedestal and sometimes you think you're a rock star, but you always have to remember that there's people that look at you just for who you are and what you do, not for the amount of goals you kick, the amount of wins and losses. So I thank them. Um, to my family, um, to Britt and to Ezzy, thanks for all that you do. Um, yeah, keep me humble at home, but the gratitude I have for everything that you guys do and give me a new perspective on life and, and what it's all about being a father is, uh, I couldn't ask for any more and um, I'm so thankful. And, and to the boys, I said the boys I've played with, um, thanks for the journey. The boys I haven't um, been able to get out in the park with, I wish you all the best and I'm just been glad and fortunate to be around you guys and I wish you nothing more than success moving forward. Um, and yeah, I guess, yeah, just looking forward to the next couple of years, I guess it's a bit of a change, a bit of a challenge, but it's something that I'm excited about. And um, yeah, like I said, my role in the game has been as much about what I do on field, but off field. And um, Shuey actually was down in his thing quoting T.I. the rapper the other week about paving the way so these cats get paid today. But I, um, I always had that mantra in my head of trying to make sure that I can pave the way so someone can look at me on TV and go, I want to play football like Nick Nat. Or I look like Nick Nat, I want to do what he does. And, and hopefully I've done that to the best of my ability. So um, thank you to the footy club. Thanks to everyone for coming out. Thanks to Simo and Niz and everyone involved. And um, yeah, I'm so appreciative of the journey I've had over the 15 years. <laughs> Nick, um, you had a contract for next year. You could have gone on. When did you know that it was time to, to hang him up? Yeah, the club's been really good in allowing me time to make my decision. Um, you know, they would have given me to the end of the year until next year to make a decision on where I was and train on. But I just felt now was the right time to do it. Um, my Achilles isn't quite right. It's um, it's going to be a long journey and. I think being realistic to come back and play, you know, a couple of games at the end to get a send off. I thought, um, as much as some people say I might deserve it or I warrant it, I thought it might be a little bit selfish. So, um, yeah, hopefully open up a bit of space for someone else to fill that void. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm pretty content with the decision that I've made. It was a decision I wanted to make as well, not what everyone else sort of wanted or thought believed was right. Um, and yeah, I can go home pretty happy knowing that I think I've made the right one. You obviously spoke with your family, but then who was the person from the club that you called when you made the decision and told them, and what was their response? Um, 
it was hard because I don't think anyone would answer their phone because Shuey rang the week before, Bunga rang the week before that. So um, I was trying to find a time where I could actually retire and I didn't think it was going to actually happen. But um, no, I, I sat down with Simo and I guess being former players, um, you understand when your mind is sort of checked out or when you realise that it's time. And I think I was coming to terms with, you know, juggling whether it was time or not, whether I could go on. And it's a hard one. When you know, you just, you know and... Yeah, I think that conversation just probably solidified with me that, yeah, it's time to make a decision. Where you killed him? What, what, what have you actually done to what's the What's the extent of the damage? You've yeah, I've ruptured my Achilles. There's a bit going on in there. But, yeah, I've had this moon boot on for a fair while. And, yeah, for me, it was all about trying to get back to, to get back and re rehab for a while. You know, I've been doing that for the last couple of years now. Uh, you know, I missed a big chunky last year and then this year, the entirety of the season. So I think as much physically as it is hard to get back, I think mentally it would have you know, ultimately taking a toll on me. And I, I always enjoyed my time at this footy club. I didn't want to be in a space where I wasn't enjoying what West Coast has done and what West Coast is about. In terms of the moment, was there a moment when you thought, that's it, that's the, that's the time where I need to, to hang him up? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I told the boys something that happened you know, in the change rooms that probably decided that moment, but uh, I'll leave it at that. But for me, it was, um, yeah, it was probably happened to myself every three, four weeks. Like when you're winning and losing, I'm a, I'm a sucker for riding that roller coaster. When we win, you know, I'll play on 10 years. When we're losing, I'm like, no, I'm done. So uh, I've had some pretty serious injuries, as you all know, over the years. And, um, you know, it's crossed my mind a number of times. And so to actually make that final decision like I have now, it, like I said, it didn't come easily. It was something that was really tough, but I wouldn't say it was one specific moment. I think it was a culmination of, I guess, what's transpired over the last couple of years. Do you realise what you've done for the game in terms of, I guess, transforming a, a bloke of your size, but with the explosiveness and also the, the ability to have the speed and the pure tap ruck? Though, do you understand your standing in the game? Uh, I do a bit. Yeah, I think I, I understand and appreciate what I've done um, in my role. But like I said, fingers crossed, I've helped develop some kids, some kids that look like me, some kids that play like me, to um, then carry on that sort of legacy and play in a similar similar nature. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll sit back in 10 years time and I'm sure I'll be watching Google highlights and YouTube and, and watching and showing my son um, who daddy used to be. But um, yeah, for me, I think it'll probably hit home more later on down the track. There's so many big moments that you've been involved in, in your career. Are you a player that has thrived in that sort of responsibility and taking ownership of it? Yeah, I love that. I, I remember Daniel Kerr used to always talk about um, the good players want the ball in their hand, you know, when it's crunch time, but like they don't run away from it. So that's when you know the players that really want that pressure and really embrace it um, in those moments uh, are the guys that stand up. And those have been the bungers, the shoeys over the years. So, um, yeah, for me, I've fell in that same sort of category where I always wanted the ball, um, you know, in those final moments. But I think, like I said, those moments um, in big games that have happened, there's always been a string of things that happened beforehand and players that have, you know, had a hand in it all. So, uh, yeah, something I've, I'll always remember. Nick, when, you're, when you say Nick Nui, a lot of people say human highlights real. You're talking about your family just before and uh, showing uh, the kids one of those highlights, or kids to be. Um, in your mind, what's the highlight that stands out the most that you'd like showing them? Um, oh, there's been a, there's been a couple. Um, my, um, maybe my first game. My first game was something that will probably stick in my mind forever. It was um, against Richmond. Uh, I was wearing number nine. Obviously, one of my childhood heroes in Kazi. He was standing on the other side of the circle. Uh, and yeah, he told me to take his jumper off, uh, not to be wearing it. So it was his first game for the Tigers back against West Coast. So that's something that will always forever stay in my mind. We lost that game in the end, but it's something that I have fond memories of. And I think, yeah, that'll probably be the one thing that I will show him over and over. Toughest opponent? Uh, oh, Dean Cox at training. Yeah, I think toughest <laughs> opponent. He made it pretty hard. Um, yeah, Brendan Laid, Aaron Sandlands, like there's been a few over the years and they seem to be getting bigger and bigger and more athletic. So I feel sorry for some of the rucks Baz coming through at the moment. Uh, talking about highlights, sorry, just like, talking about highlights, one of your big highlights off the field was your dunk at the Wildcats game. Now that you're retiring, can you let us in on uh, what John Walsfold actually said to you? Yeah, I don't know why I got in trouble for that news. I, um, I don't know, these guys paid me to jump for a living, so I jumped. Um, <laughs> Nah, it was silly. It was. It was. It, it, it'd be remiss of me to say that I um, I should have done it. Like I, I had fun. I got caught up in the moment of um, you know, people not dunking in the NBL, and uh, yeah, I thought I'd go and do it and be a hero. You got cheerleaders carrying on, hit the crowd, jumping around, and yeah, for me it was. I was the happiest person on earth. But 
I look back and it did compromise if you know Coxie got injured or someone else um, wasn't able to play, then and I wasn't able to play because I was injured. Um, yeah, it hurt the footy club and probably speaks volumes of what's happened over the last couple of years. Guys get injured, um, it affects the whole footy club and affects the year. So it was fun, but yeah, won't be happening again. I'm guessing you're going to get a few offers. What are you going to do next? Um, oh, a bit of family time for me initially. Yeah, I'm still weighing that up. So. Uh, I think it would make sense to do something around the footy club or with the footy club at some stage. Um, but yeah, like Bunga said last week, um, uh, the other week, I just want to relax a little bit, maybe go fishing and just hang out, get your weekends back um, and yeah, just enjoy family life at home for now. I think you talk about being content. How does 2018 sit with you and how were you able to, I guess, park it and then move on? Yeah, it probably sits in the same boat as 2015. Obviously that was just as rough for me. That was the toughest year of my life. and. Then to lose the grand final was, you know, just probably exacerbated that feeling even more. So for me, 2018 was tough, but there was a lot of elation because I got to see a lot of my mates um, partake in success too. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd put them both in the same same box. But, yeah, I don't regret not ever winning a premiership. Obviously, that's what you play for and that's what you want. But like I said earlier, I got a lot out of my career. I got a lot from this footy club and it's something I'm forever grateful for. Adam, how would you sum up his career in a couple of words? Well, well, I suppose there's two, there's two parts. There's, there's on-field, and I spoke this, this to the players, on-field presence. I don't think there's anything bigger or any player bigger in, in the game. And, and I've said a few pretty big statements last three weeks with the players we've had up here, but on-field presence is probably, yeah, there's none bigger. Um, and then off-field, the level of which he's connected to the, the footy club, but the community uh, and the wider community is probably unparalleled. And um, that makes him very unique, and we're going to miss him. Scott once said that it's disadvantaged to score a goal against you guys because you have to go back and compete against him. What, what, how much confidence do you take knowing that he was your, your number one ruckman? Oh, look, um, I think as he as Nick evolved throughout his career, what what people really underestimate is how how crafty he, he became. Um, so obviously his leap is pretty hard to, to combat. But then he started to work on other parts of the the ruck craft, which which made him really hard to play against. So. Yeah, it's a massive asset, and we've missed it ter terribly the last couple of years. So, um, one of the great ruckmen of all time. Nick, you uh, you mentioned that you'd like to stay involved with the club in some capacity. Is coaching anything that you know piques your interest? Something you'd maybe aspire to down the track? Yeah, no, I don't think so. Coaches don't have much of a life outside of the <laughs> footy club. I um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll definitely come in. I like to, I guess, do a bit of mentorship or just helping out with the rucks, um, the midfielders. I think I'll always play a part in that. I don't know if it'll be an official uh, role at the footy club, um, but for me, I'd just love to see the, guy, see the guys have success. So I reckon I'll be in here for sure, um, doing something to some capacity. Uh, Nick, you, you touched on it before, but you're now a father. I seem to be father of two. Um, <laughs> how has that changed your life? Yeah, you're injured so much, there's no TV at home, you end up having two kids. Um, but it's been the best thing ever. Um, as you can hear him carrying on, he cares more for Coco Melon than he does for me. But I, um, I loved it so much. And I guess you see it with the boys and the players in the past, uh, bringing their kids in and watching them at the games and things like that, running out with them. And it, and it feels special. But then when you have your own child, you sort of want that for them as well and you want to take them to the game. Um, so for me, it's um, given me another new perspective on life and what it's like being a father being a role model again and um, yeah, being the best dad that I can be. Nick, did it surprise you at all? Is it a reality of being a footballer 2021, you have a great year and then after that, multiple injuries and eight games sort of since. Do you think that that's what you have to go in with expectation, not knowing when your last game is going to be? Oh, 100%. I think every player has that. They play every game like it's their last. Um, I've had a lot of success beforehand and um, I'll continue to do so post my footy career. So. I think it's like anything in life, there's the ups and downs, there's the trials and tribulations, but you can't always predict when it's going to end or when it's going to finish. But yeah, I was never fearful of the end. I always knew it was going to come. I saw a lot of players before me come and go from the footy club. And I think I've been the fortunate one, along with Bunga and Shuey, to be able to sit in front of everyone and actually announce my retirement. Like, I've got a lot of teammates in the past who've been told over the phone uh, in the off season or, you know, they're told in the last week of footy club during the exit meetings that they're no longer required. So. Um, yeah, I feel I've been blessed with football, um, you know, even though the last couple of years haven't been as great as what probably the, I wanted it to be. You spoke about your memory of your debut. What was your first memory of coming into West Coast Eagles at the club? 
Uh, yeah, there was a lot of uh, 06 Premiership players, I guess. A lot of guys I looked up to and, and went to watch on the weekends. Uh, I'm now rubbing shoulders with, with some of those guys. And uh, I was in awe. I was in awe of, you know, Embley, Glass, Pritis, Hearn, um, Cox, like all, all those guys that I looked up to as, as a child and watching him play in some of, those, some of those classic games in particular against Sydney. I, um, yeah, I was now sitting alongside him in the change rooms, going to lunch, having a coffee with him. Um, and yeah, those are probably memories that I didn't, I probably took for granted back then, but now I look back and go, man, that's pretty cool. Um, I got to, you know, play alongside some of the greats of the game. Uh, yeah, mark of the year was, was cool. Um, yeah, for someone who doesn't take too many marks, um, I'll remember that one for sure. But um, yeah, mark of the year was something that was, uh, like I said, it was one of those things that you just do. And um, it's funny because you, you get, you inspire kids. Like I said, the things that you don't know you're doing sometimes has a big effect. You know, you go up to the Kimberley and there's kids taking hangers and instead of yelling out, you know, Jezelenko or whoever it is, Warwick Kappa, they're yelling at Nat Nui sometimes so, or Sampy. So it's um, something that, you know, I'm, I'm grateful I got to do as well. What about the, uh, the goal after the signing? What do you that day? Um, yeah, I remember Drew Petrie. I um, was there when, uh, <laughs> when he was there um, on the field uh, kicking that goal after the siren. It was, um, oh, it was a big moment. I think it, you know, if, as much as it was for the boys, the crowd really got around us as well and, and we're pretty excited. So, um, yeah, another probably big moment that I'll look back on and, and be proud of. In terms of the last few weeks, it's, it's been pretty big. Some of the, the biggest names have, have farewell, but how quickly can the club turn it around, Nick? I think fairly quickly. Like, I think people forget sometimes that clubs go through these lulls. There's some down times. Um, you know, a lot of us players wouldn't be in the room if it wasn't for some of those down times. Like, Shuey and I came at the end of 08 after the, t the club had won a premiership in 06 and then we were struggling and we were early picks. So I think those, that's starting to happen now. Um, you know, you see guys like Elijah and Ruben and Noah Long come through and, um, you know, they're probably that next step of generation of guys that are going to come and help the players above them get better and improve. So I think it's turned around. Um, obviously, the results this year haven't been what we wanted, but um, never forget, we won, a, we won a wooden spoon in 2010 and I was a part of that. And we had some success in 2011. So, I um, yeah, I think it's going to turn really quickly. And I feel we've got the right group for it, the right coaches, the right administration for it. But like I said, it just takes time. And we're an impatient state, an impatient footy club. And we're a proud footy club. So I think losing is not part of our DNA. So as much as we're going through it now, I think some people just need to have a bit of perspective, a bit of patience, a bit of understanding, because the boys will get it done. It's just going to take a little bit of time. You spoke about your appreciation for Adam and what he did for you. Did you feel at times it was tough not to be out there helping, you know, try and get some results when Adam is obviously going through a, a difficult time as well? Yeah, for sure. I think when the coach cops it, when the players cop it, um, in particular when younger guys cop it and, and you're sitting on the sidelines, it's very frustrating because you want to go out and prove a point. Um, I think Boots did it against St Kilda um, in that game. You know, he went and played his heart out. And, yeah, that's something I really was disappointed I wasn't able to do. But I don't know, that's the lay of the land out west, as you guys know. You guys are the ones that are doing it. So, <laughs> it, um, yeah, when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. But that's just the part of the competitive sport that we play. Um, everyone wants to win. Everyone wants the best out of everyone. And, yeah, fingers crossed we turn that around really, really soon. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thank you, mate. Enjoy this last bit. <laughs>